Just how cold is Kratos' Leviathan Axe? When you spend your entire life fighting the gods themselves, you better bring along with you the weaponry to match your might. In God of War 4, your character Kratos brings along with him an awesome new axe that can not only fly around like Thor's hammer, it can freeze your enemies instantaneously. But just how cripplingly cold would this axe need to be in order to do that? God of War 4 is a fantastic new entry in the God of War franchise from Santa Monica Studios. In it, they decided to give up Kratos' signature Blades of Chaos for the Leviathan Axe, a bone-chilling weapon imbued with the screams of 20, count them 20, Frost Trolls. In the game, you use the axe to freeze objects and enemies in fractions of a second. But freezing is a complicated physical process. How is the axe so cold? And how long would it really take to turn enemies into trollsicles? First, setting aside all magic for just a moment, how can the axe make itself so cold, seemingly at will? Well, specifically, the axe head might be getting colder and therefore creating a temperature gradient inside of the axe itself, a difference in temperature between one part of the axe and another. And like how pressure always goes from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure as it moves, heat always flows from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. Drogger! Jeez. Heads up next time, kid. Generally speaking, when faster and therefore hotter particles bump into slower and colder particles, boy, the hotter particles lose kinetic energy in that exchange and the colder particles gain kinetic energy, which brings everything closer to a temperature equilibrium. And because colder particles never lose energy in these little collisions, heat always flows from high to low. Good job, boy. No, I shouldn't. Engineers in our realm use temperature gradients in order to precisely cool down things with science. For example, imagine that you had a tube of cold fluid moving through some volume of hotter stuff. Because of the direction that heat flows, boy, the heat from this hotter volume will start to make its way into the colder fluid. And that fluid, as it moves, will take some of that heat away. Now, if you can find a way to get rid of this heat, you have just effectively created a heat sink. And the same basic principles operate air conditioners and our refrigerators. I said heat sink, not snake. Go Jorman Gander at something else for a bit. <laughs> so thinking about how heat flows, how could the Leviathan Axe make itself so cold? Well, what if that brilliant blue glow that the axe head gets denotes some kind of interior liquid cooling going on, like it actually uses the air from those frost trolls screams? Then, set up internally like a heat sink and powered by the thermal energy of, I don't know, Kratos' Spartan Rage, then the Leviathan Axe could act just like a refrigerator in Kratos' hands, acting to constantly pull heat energy out of the blade head until it reaches ice cold temperatures. But how the axe gets cold isn't as important as how cold the axe needs to get. So what temperature do we need to freeze a flank of flesh fast? Well, to do that, you would need something colder than the winds of hell, brother. Yeah, but yes, yes you would. Let's set up the battlefield. There's a Draugr in our way, and we want to use our axe to freeze his entire body in a blink, just like we see in the game. Now, I'm going to assume that even though the Draugr is a gross dead boy, he has an internal flesh temp roughly similar to ours, about 37 degrees Celsius. I'm also gonna assume a flesh density like ours, that's kind of like water, a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Now to fight our Draugr, we have our axe. Okay, I hate it when that happens, which has a surface area per blade head side from prop replicas that I could find of 0.043 square 
meters. Now, if that Draugr's flesh was in contact at that temperature with this amount of surface area of blade, we can use some other thermodynamics to figure out how quickly his flesh might freeze given some temperature. So let's be generous and say that if we can find some temperature that freezes his entire body in less than five seconds, we'll be happy. Svartalheim, that thing's fast. To start checking temperatures, we are gonna use the concept of thermal conduction, a measure of how quickly and easily heat flows through materials. Thermal conductivity can make a big difference. For example, if you took two identical ice cubes and put them on two surfaces, one wood and one steel, you would find that the ice cube on the steel surface melted much, much faster. And that's because heat moves through steel a lot better than it does through wood, even though both of these surfaces are exactly the same temperature. Thermal conductivity is the same reason why your tongue on a cold day can get stuck to metal. Like this, the saliva is losing temperature so fast that it can freeze right on the middle. <clears throat> oh, no, oh, great, oh, the raven that hurt. Ah. Thermal conduction is governed by smart boy Don Baptiste Joseph Fourier's law of thermal thermal conduction, and we can use this equation to stop plugging in temperature differences to find freezing times. Ah, ow. Fourier's law here states that the amount of heat flow through some material is equivalent to the thermal conductivity of that material multiplied by the area across which the heat is flowing multiplied by the temperature gradient, which is the difference in temperature between two distances, the length L here, all that multiplied by time. We can assume values for all of these variables, including temperature, to see how cold Kratos' ax would really need to be to freeze flesh fast. The numbers that I'm gonna start out with include an ice cold ax at zero degrees Celsius and the heat flow necessary to freeze just one centimeters worth of watery flesh around the ax that is touching just one side of the ax. It would be the same for the other side. So now we can solve for time, math time. Setting the heat flow equal to the amount of heat that would have to flow out of one centimeter worth of flesh on the other side of the ax to freeze it and dividing it by some averaged out values here because we are simplifying a lot. We get the time that it would take Kratos' ax if it was zero degrees Celsius and ice cold to freeze just one centimeter of Draugr flesh. And that time is two thousand in 230 seconds, or over 30 minutes for just one centimeter of flesh. Not good enough, we have to go colder. Much colder. To freeze our enemies faster, we have to get so much colder, in fact, that Kratos' ax would be the coldest object in the universe. Yes, really. Let's start messing with the only variable that we really can, the temperature gradient. If Kratos' ax gets colder, then more heat is going to flow into it per unit time. So let's go colder than zero degrees Celsius. How about we make the blade as cold as planet Hoth, a frigid negative 60 degrees Celsius. If you do that, the time to freeze indeed goes down, but it is still way too long. 850 seconds over 14 minutes to freeze just one centimeter of Draugr flesh on one side of the ax. Keep in mind that to do what we see it do in the game, the ax is gonna need to freeze like a meter, a hundred times more than our value on either side of its blade. So we have to go colder. We have to go way colder. How about Absolute zero. At zero degrees Kelvin, fundamental particles that make up matter have the least amount of movement that is physically possible in this universe. Absolute zero, as this state is called, is impossible for us to achieve thermodynamically as far as we know, but scientists have gotten pretty close. In 2014, Italian and American scientists cooled down one cubic meter of space to just six Milli Kelvin. That made that one cubic meter the coldest part of the universe. <laughs> really. And other scientists have gotten even closer to absolute zero, to nano and even pico 
Kelvin. But let's just plug in absolute zero for Kratos' axe and see what happens. If the blade of Kratos' Leviathan axe was at absolute zero temperature, then the time it would take to pull enough heat out of one centimeter of Draugr bod to freeze it would be two. 166 seconds, almost five minutes, still not cold enough. Dang! Yes, it is disappointing that absolute zero is not cold enough for our purposes, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Liquid nitrogen is just 77 Kelvin above absolute zero, and we freeze stuff all the way through with it all the time. If you've ever tried to do so, you know that it's not instantaneous, it takes a while. The food industry freezes things with liquid nitrogen all the way through all the time on an industrial scale and they always find minutes, not moments. I've even found papers that looked at freezing burger patties all the way through with liquid nitrogen of the same thickness that we were talking about with Draugr flesh and they found minutes just like we did. So not cold enough, but this is still pretty darn cool. Kratos' axe would have to be colder than absolute zero to do what we see it do. So cold that cold doesn't really have any meaning anymore. Sounds epic enough for a god to me. <coughs> it's hard on the courts. So how cold would Kratos' Leviathan axe really need to be in order to freeze enemies all the way through almost instantaneously? Well, if the mechanism at play here is a cold axe blade as it looks in the game, then it would have to be colder than absolute zero. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense in our world, but I know why the game's developers made it make sense in theirs. It's awesome, and nobody wants to wait around for some corpse boy to freeze all the way through when they're playing the game. And science says you need some kind of magic in this situation, so it's fine. It even makes a weird kind of sense in a world with giant talking snakes, living severed heads, and actual gods. Because science, whoops, science, yeah. Keep in mind that this is a very simple approximation of what's going on. In reality, the time for something to freeze around something really cold, like an ax head, would be so complicated by the different layers that would form. Right at the ax head, you'd have ice, and then you'd have kind of frozen flesh, and then you'd have watery flesh, and you'd have to calculate how these all these layers move out over time at different temperature ranges and differences, and it's compounded by the fact that they're different materials, like your refrigerator, if it gets frost on it, can reduce its freezing potential by like hundreds of time. So this is a very simple approximation, but I think this is the fastest it could possibly happen because anything more complicated would extend the time back. Hey, boy, put that down. Kids. Thanks so much for watching, Jeremy, and thanks to Matterbeam for their help on this episode. If you like this video, like it if you're on Facebook, and if you are on YouTube, like it and subscribe it and hit that notification bell because we do a lot of nerdy stuff on this channel. You can follow Because Science and me at these handles here, and if you go to Project Alpha at projectalpha.com and sign up for a free trial, you can get this show two days earlier than everyone else, and you can check out my new show, a debate show called Natural Selection. Thanks.